Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, in this experiment, uh, we're going to build a battery with a new type of carbon. I was watching a uh, K-Rex video a couple of weeks ago where he was using uh, carbon black as a <coughs> as a carbon and his battery in, instead of uh, activated charcoal. And so I started looking for some carbon black and I found this uh, carbon ink uh, that comes from Japan. Well, I decided I'd, I'd get some of that and uh, and see what uh, what it does. So we're just going to do the the very basic battery uh, this time. I've got a separator here. I've painted some of the uh, carbon black on one side of it, and then I've got uh, titanium dioxide and PVA uh, glue uh, that gelled in borax for for this side. And we're just going to put it together uh, with just that first and see if it generates any kind of power at all. And, uh, and then we'll add a little graphite uh, to that uh, and, and see what kind of difference it makes, if any. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to uh, just put this on there. Make sure I get the right side. A little bit of water on it because it's dried out. Okay, and this is the stainless steel from the last air battery uh, experiment. And we'll just set it on there like that, and we've got. Uh, 85 and dropping on that. So let's see what kind of amps we get. Ready? 3, 2, 1. So uh, 3.8 milliamps. Not very much. Move this over a little bit here. And our voltage is still dropping. But no, it's climbing actually right now. So it does work with carbon black instead of graphite. Not as well, though. And uh, the carbon black is supposed to be conductive according to uh, K-Rex. But uh, I tested it on a piece of paper when I, after I coated it on there and I didn't get anything there. So. All right, let's just discharge it again. And see what we get. Three, two, one. Less, of course. All right, less. Now let's put a little graphite on it and see what that does to it. I'm back. Instead of instead of rebuilding the battery, I decided just to do something different. I'm going to try uh, uh, another uh, electrolyte in it. This time we're going to put a salt in it, a magnesium sulfate. I've never tried this before, and so this, and we can add it right through the stainless steel screen. So that actually makes it easy to try different types of uh, electrolytes. All right, so we're at one volt. Let's see. Alright, now let's take a few drops of some mag sulfate and put it in there and see what we get. The voltage is going up. I haven't even pressed on it yet. Alright, there's half a dozen drops. And we're at 104 and slowly climbing. Push this down with the nah, yeah. All right, so we got 105. Going to be about 106. Okay, let's see what kind of amps we got right there. Ready? Three, two, one. Eleven. Just got a little more voltage out of it.
course we didn't add very much mag sulfate it may take a little bit to uh, get in there and work too maybe I don't know So it is going up some, so it may be just taking a little while to, get to uh, work its way in there. But it's not a huge, uh, huge increase in uh, in power by adding the uh, adding that mag sulfate to it. it seems like the, the of the of the uh, electrolytes I've tried, uh, phosphoric acid is is definitely the best. something that time so it's going up slowly I had just a few drops of phosphoric acid here in this uh, little container and I drifted on there look at our voltage climb out of that I'm telling you phosphoric acid is is perfect for the cell it looks like let's see what kind of amps we get out of it now so we're at 123 about Want to come down. Oh no, there it was pressure. Alright, so what's still going to amp? 3, 2, 1, 47. Oh, and it was holding there too. Huge difference putting the phosphoric acid in there versus a mag sulfate. Now, I put more mag sulfate in there than I did with the phosphoric acid. And they're mixed together now, as a matter of fact. So, what you're actually seeing is a, a mixture of a salt and uh, and phosphoric acid. I was ready to stop, and then I had the idea: let's do this. All right, let's hit it again here. It's still climbing slow. Ready? Three, two, one. 69, 71, 72, it was still climbing. Whoa, that's pretty good, huh? That's just, I don't know, maybe there was probably four or five drops there, maybe. short there. I mean, I kept it on there for a while. It's slowing down now, though. Well, there goes a little burst again. I have noticed it, it wants to uh, come and go in like burst. I don't know. Alright, we'll, we'll hit it about 110. Alright, there it is, 110, ready? 3, 2, 1, 83 that time. Oh, look at 84, still holding and climbing. Yeah, baby. Now there's some holding. Maybe the salt and the phosphoric acid mixed together is doing that, because look at that. That's some incredible uh, amps coming off of that. And we're holding what? 0.178 volts. Damn, look, it's still 0.84. It's just right there. And climbing still a little bit, slowly. Whoa. Well, I guess we did learn something here today, huh? A salt and uh, the acid mixed together gives that some incredible power. I mean, how I've been shortening out for now, what, my minute or so? And we're still holding, and it's, it's gaining, and we're now at point, or we're now at 85 milliamps and still climbing. And look, the voltage is going up, too. 
Look at that. Now it's the voltage is 181. How about that? That's weird, isn't it? This battery is just so full of surprises. Now we're almost to one. There's 86 milliamps, and the voltage is still wanting to climb a little bit too. There's 118.3. Uh, come on, now we're up to 87 milliamps. Almost. Come on, there, get 87. There we go. Damn, I should be timing this, but this is a this is a long discharge. And look at the milliamps we're holding. And look now, the voltage is up to 185. Holy moly! And 87 milliamps. Still climbing. It's it got to be the combination of the air and the salt and the acid. And I bet we're we got to be sucking some water down. I would think on that. Voltage is now 186, <laughs> and our amps are now 88 milliamps. Uh, voltage just went up to 187. This is pretty unbe unbelievable, isn't it? A salt and an acid. 18.8. We've got to be. Let's see what it. Let's see if it climbs back up. Look at that mess I got on my fingers. Whoa. Looks like we probably did some damage to the thing. It's 0.5323. Real slow recharge after that. Okay, I'm sure I'm out of time. I'm going to have to do some cutting on this video, but boy, I'm glad I uh, threw that little bit of acid on there and tested this again. Was, uh, that's pretty incredible, I think. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, I'm back, and uh, I let it sit for like a half hour, and it recovered all the way back up to one volt, and I, so I started to uh, to show you this, and I forgot to turn the camera on. So, <laughs> but anyway, whenever I, when I press down on this, we'll get the, and it went back up to 10, almost 104, and it was still climbing. You know, so uh, so I uh, I discharged it again to see what kind of amps they got, and it got the same thing, uh, 83 uh, milliamps again. So uh, it re it fully recovered from uh, that long uh, dead short on that. All right, so let's uh, hit it again so I can show you. You can see this is still climbing up now. It's at 0 0.92. And uh, let's do the amps one more time. Ready? Three, two, one. Look at there. See, 90. And drop down a little bit to 80. Now slowly dropping from uh, from there. And I just and it and it held there at 84 for the last time. So we'll see where it holds at this time. Looks like it's going to hold right at around 77. So that's pretty impressive, huh? I mean, after a really long discharge like this, it fully recovers, and then uh, you do it again, and it's pretty much the same thing over again. This is slightly worse, you know, probably running out of water again. <laughs> but uh, wow, I like the way the uh, the uh, acid and the uh, salt are working together on that. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.